Welcome back to the Force Feed. In today's gaming news, Titanfall gets a release date, registration for the Nosgoth closed alpha is now open, and Dark Matter is met with some harsh criticism for being an unfinished game. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Force here with your day's gaming news. First up today, Titanfall, the upcoming mech-based first-person shooter from Respawn Entertainment, now has a release date. The game will be available here in North America on March 11th for the Xbox One and 360 and over in Europe on March 13th. Pre-orders are currently available for a standard and collector's edition. If you decide to pick up the collector's edition, you'll be also getting an 18-inch statue with LED lights, an art book, and a poster although all of those things plus the game will cost you $250, which is a bit steep in my opinion. But that aside, this is one of those next-gen titles that has a lot of people really excited. It's one of those games wherever it's been available to play at conventions, it seems to be the most talked about title. And although some people may look at this and think it's just another multiplayer FPS, maybe the inclusion of mechs and the different movement systems that they're going to have with jetpacks and wall running will be enough to sort of revitalize the genre because Honestly, I would assume most people agree with me in saying that modern day shooter FPS games are getting a little stale. Uh, next up in news, the closed alpha registration for the upcoming game Nosgoth is now available. Now, if you haven't heard of Nosgoth, it is a game set in the Legacy of Kane universe, but it is not a traditional Legacy of Kane game. Nosgoth is going to be a free to play multiplayer combat game that pits vampires versus humans in the war in the Nosgoth universe. It features asynchronous PVP with both sides having different types of classes and different types of abilities and registration for that closed alpha and beta as I mentioned is currently available uh, you can do so on the game's official website this is a rather interesting title because you know what I have fond memories of the Legacy of Kane franchise but this is nothing like any other Legacy of Kane game and I have to wonder the fact that they're deciding to reboot the uh, Legacy of Kane universe is fantastic but the route that they've taken it could definitely potentially be a big whiff. We'll have to see uh, how the quality of the game comes out, but they're definitely taking a really, really big chance with steering away from what people are used to when it comes to Legacy of Kane. Now, the good thing, though, is if this game does well, if it's a solid title and people enjoy it, maybe this will eventually mean we get a traditional single-player Legacy of Kane back sometime within the next few years. Maybe that'll be a title that comes back with next-gen consoles. But right now, I'm just not sure how excited Legacy of Kane fans are for this game the quality of the game aside. And last up in news today, we're going to be talking about a title that launched last week by the name of Dark Matter. Dark Matter is a 2.5D side-scrolling survival horror game that is set in space. But that's not what's important here. What is important is that the game was met with much controversy over the weekend as a result to its ending. The game abruptly ends with a wall of text, and it seems the most Players felt that that was rather unfitting for what they'd experienced throughout the rest of the course of the game. Well, reportedly, what happened is that the developer ended the game without a traditional ending and just presenting a wall of text because they ran out of funding. At least those were the initial reports. Uh, the developer then later came out and said, no, 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 we, we, uh, we ended the game this way because it's episodic content, even though it was never advertised originally on the Steam page as episodic content. So there was a whole lot of drama, and all of this has resulted in the game being pulled from Steam and is no longer available for sale, and people who purchase it from good old games can get a refund if you purchased it before the 21st. It's a pretty interesting matter and actually rather depressing for anyone who did buy the game, play through those first three or four hours, gets to the end, and the end is just literally a wall of text. Now this isn't to say games can't end with text, but it, the, the fact that it abruptly ends and the entire resolution comes from a couple of paragraphs and it doesn't really sync up with the gameplay. Now, I myself have not played the title, but the fact that so many people who did play the game were up in arms from this ending leads me to believe that it was an unfinished product and it was pushed out not complete. And that also gets me to wonder about Steam's approval process and the fact, do they vet these games? Do they look at these games and try them before they publish them and make them available for sale? Typically not as much of an issue for AAA titles, although quality varies, you expect it to be more or less a finished game. Unfortunately, from some of these indie developers, we get debacles like this, where a game becomes available for sale, and we're not talking early access, as a full packaged and, and labeled as a full complete product, and then we get some sort of a crappy ending that's a wall of text, and 
just seems completely out of place. It's it's a rather unfortunate situation. It's good though that Steam has done the right thing and pulled it from the shelves, and it's good that Good Old Games has decided to offer refunds refunds for people who purchased it before the 21st, which was really before all this drama started to go really, really public. I'd like to know what you guys think about this matter or any of the topics discussed here today, so please go ahead and let me know in the comment section below, and that's going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching.